why we don't raise pinches? Uh, people are often hesitant to raise pinches out of concern that doing so might make them seem uh, thin-skinned or petty. You probably know someone who can take an affront at the smallest, slightest comment, and you don't want to be like them. Or you may think, well, you know, it's probably not worth it. Well, sometimes that's true, but sometimes if you dig deeper, you'll find that it's more important to you than you initially realized. Try this. Change the first pronoun to I or you, as in I'm just not worth it, to you're just not worth it. Do you still think the issue isn't worth raising? Sometimes you may, but often you realize there are more feelings there than you first recognized. Now, many people are also hesitant to raise pinches out of concern that speaking up might make things worse. Will your complaint cause the other to retaliate? Or perhaps will it trigger a bunch of other issues? Or do you hold back because you see the relationship or the other person as fragile, very sensitive? Well, if you're asked, if a friend of yours felt pinched by a comment you made, would you want them to tell you? Almost universally, everybody would say yes. So if you want that, wouldn't you want to do that for them when you're pinched? Now, just think back about all the discussions about self-disclosure. Well, this is part of it. A final reason why we resist pinches early on is that we assume that the other meant no harm. We always give them the benefit of the doubt. We think, if they didn't mean to bother me, why should I be bothered? Right? I mean, I, they, they probably didn't didn't mean it, or they probably didn't know at that time, okay? Now, maybe at the start, that type of rationalization would work, but oftentimes you will notice, perhaps in your own experience, these little things tend to snowball. Now, many pinches go away, but ask yourself, will this pinch linger? Connect to other issues? Will it trigger a major fight about missing milk? rather than what's really going on. Now, once a pinch grows this way, when people neglect to raise them early on, it threatens to become a crunch. Now, crunches are much more problematic than pinches because in addition to the likelihood that much stronger feelings now exist, you're more likely to have developed a negative story about the other person which probably be not fair anymore to that person. So as pinches grow into crunches, we begin to develop a story that is likely to include negative assumptions about the other person. Furthermore, once we have developed a negative story, we have a tendency to selectively collect data or fall into some sort of confirmation bias. It's like building a case to support our own view, which may not be true. The truth is, we're always going to be su subject to confirmation bias. We'll always be susceptible to these things. When you develop a belief, or even just the slightest hunch, that you have a tendency to pay more attention to incidents that support these things and discount everything else, you should be worried. Now, the thing here is that when we try to raise pinches, we try to put it within humor even if it were said with a smile or the light voice, you know, you ask yourself, how will that land? On one hand, it could be positive, okay? Uh, humor is a universal thing, and people obviously don't want to feel uh, awkward about a particular situation. Now, humor works in these situations precisely because of its power to help people connect. Now, humor is a good catalyst for connection. It is once said, laughter, is the shortest distance between two people. Now, sharing a joke or a funny comment or a funny anecdote, well, can bring us closer to one another. It can lighten the mood and lift our spirits. When we banter and kid around, not only do we get to know one another better, but we also experience a special kind of freedom. We feel loose. We feel more confident. We feel more open to, to the other person. It's said, 
also that laughter makes us more physically resilient to tensions and stressors. And it also facilitates social bonding and increases trust. When people laugh together at work, relationships improve, and people feel more valued and trusted. Now, on the other hand, humor rarely works if the joke is at the person's expense or is an indirect way of saying something that isn't funny at all. Think about us throwing shade about the other person. Okay, humor, well, that's no longer humor, that's sarcasm. At the same time, humor can also be a shield to hide behind if the other side takes some sort of an affront or feel offended by what you've just said. Now, the problem with using humor to convey messages that you're raising pinches is that it can be ambiguous. Humor is not direct. You know? At the same time, if you're trying to be very, very direct with a person, that other person might be more susceptible to, to be offended by. So where's the balance there? Now, this is not to say that humor doesn't work, okay? But you have to be sensitive to the context. How large is your pinch, okay? Remember that there may be more to your reaction than you first thought, okay? So it's probably not a pinch. What kind of sense of humor does the other person have? Is that person typically a loose, jolly type of guy? Or is that person quite serious, okay? Well, some, some people can be very witty. They have a very quick quip, even if it's slightly at their expense, okay? Whereas others really, really take it personally. Now, you also have to consider the strength of the relationship. In some cases, if the relationship is fairly new, humor often, okay, especially with inside jokes, they're, they're not really recommended. Now, if the other person knows that you accept them, then, you know, sometimes we kid around, you know, Maybe other people would realize that sometimes we kid too much to the point that if it were them, that, that would be overboard, right? But okay, but if you're the type of person, if the relationship can really support those types of humor or humorous comments, okay, then you're, you're on safe ground. And finally, consider the setting. Consider the atmosphere, consider the environment. When all of these factors are taken into account, humor can actually be used uh, quite uh, reasonably well. Now, the challenge is how to have a, a conversation in a way that can resolve the issue and continue to build the relationship with all the pinches and the crunches, trying to insert the humor. In the end, you really want to raise your pinches comfortably well without being awkward about it. And that requires being able to give behaviorally specific feedback, a crucial competency that we should all learn eventually.